Welcome back to the channel guys, my name's Andy Art and this is The Brotherhood of Men, a channel solely dedicated to getting you men out there the best outcome in your lives. Now for my existing subscribers, which as of making this video there was 111 of you, which is fantastic news means the channel's starting to grow. For those of you who haven't subscribed, and I know that's the most of you, it's the biggest majority according to my analytics, it's something like 70% of viewers of this channel are not subscribed. Why not? Are you shy? What's wrong? Get yourself hitting the subscribe button. Come and join the brotherhood. Come and be a brother. My brothers and myself want to welcome you in. And hope that if you don't subscribe, at least you get something from this video, some important piece of information that will improve your life because that's what this channel is all about. For my existing subscribers, you guys are the tops. You two truly are great and you're my brothers. And I hope that you continue to get great information from this channel and that it does improve your life. So what's today's subject? Well today's subject is something I have covered before but it needs going over again and that is why men in today's society, the Western society, should never ever com contemplate getting married. Now why do I say that? For simple reason, it's a bad deal for men. It has been made actually a toxic environment for men to exist in. Marriage is an institution and I for one do not require to be institutionalized. I have no reason to be thought of as mad because you would be mad, absolutely certifiable crazy if you contemplate getting married in today's society in the Western world. Why do I say that? Well, for simple reason, I've never been married. I have no intention of ever being married. In a couple of days, I'm 57. Yeah, it's my birthday, November. So I will be 57 and I've never been married. However, I have been with the same woman for 23 years, nearly 24 years. We have a daughter, she's 22 next year, in a few months. So I don't, I'm not one of these guys who's telling you don't get into a relationship, don't do this and don't do that. I'm telling you specifically not to get married. If you choose to have a relationship, make sure you know what the laws are about a relationship in your country, in your state. Here in the UK, common law relationships or common law marriage, as it's sometimes called, are not recognised in law. So my partner, but no, my woman and I, we can live together as long as we like. And if either of us decide to move, to end it and split up, we take away what is ours, never any of what somebody else is. You don't combine your bank accounts. Your money is yours. Her money is hers. Together, you live happily. And we have for 24 years and are still happy. We are happy together because we understand each other. We know what we got into with each other. And I want that for you guys. But you need to make sure that it's right for you. Nobody else. Not right for her, but right for you. And that's the same for women as well. You need to make sure it's right for you. If you're trying to get a man down the aisle today's age, why are you doing it? Because it's always going to be for selfish reasons. For men, we know that this is a bad, toxic, terrible situation for us. It's not a good deal. Now, what makes me say that? Okay. A legal marriage, that is where you have some sort of ceremony, but then you sign what is known as the marriage certificate. You both sign it. But that's a contract. Now, has anybody ever explained to you men out there what the clauses of that contract are? 
Now, if you've had a religious ceremony where you've gone to a church or a synagogue or a mosque or whatever, whatever your religious beliefs might be, I, it's none of my business. I'm just saying that if you've gone down that route where you wanted a big church wedding or a big synagogue wedding or a big mosque wedding or whatever, that was probably done because that's what the woman wanted. She wanted to show off to her friends. Most of what women do is done to impress other women. It's, it's become this big event, this big culmination of the date and everything, and now I'm getting married and I want everybody to see my moment of triumph. Because that's exactly what it is when she's managed to convince a guy to walk down the aisle, put a ring on her finger and become her, her basically her slave, but her husband. She has succeeded. She has defeated the odds. She has made a fool out of you. And she wants all of her friends and family and your friends and family to know that she succeeded. And that's what that marriage ceremony is. Let's be honest, most men hear this phrase, you don't have to do anything, you just have to turn up. Why would that be? You don't have to do anything, you just have to turn up. It's her big day, not yours. Aren't you supposed to be entering into some kind of partnership? Well, that's a myth for a start. Marriages are not partnerships. They never were and they never are. You ask a woman if she wants to be introduced after marriage as your partner, and she will go, absolutely not, I'm your wife. You introduce me as your wife. Because that's a title that she wants. This is why when you ask a lot of single women, if you say to them, do you hope to get married one day? A massive proportion of them say, yes, I would love to. Do you want children? Oh, yes, I'd love to. They really want that. And there are many reasons why they want that. Because women share information with women. All of your peccadilloes, all of the things that you think are private between you and your woman, especially in the bedroom, they're not. She shared all of that with her friends. They already know everything there is to know about you. But if she wants to get you as a husband, she will use many tactics to get you round to that mindset of proposing to her and getting you down the aisle where you just have to show up because everything's in her favour. Now, when I was talking about that marriage certificate, that is a legal document. So once it's signed, there are ramifications in that document. And as I said, it's a contract. Have you ever in your life signed a contract that you didn't at least cursorily glance over the the provisions of that contract what's expected of you what you expect from it it's usually a meeting of minds that's what a contract is or at least it should be most men and this i know from personal experience of people in my family and also friends who have got married have told me this they didn't realize it was a legally binding contract they didn't know what the clauses of that contract were do you have you looked up what the clauses of that marriage contract are that marriage license you will find out the moment you get divorced what those contract specifications are what the clauses are in that contract don't you think you would be doing yourself a massive favor if you looked up now whilst you're single what those clauses are and what's expected of you did you know in the contract there are three parties now this is fairly true for most westernized countries in the United States, you have 50 states. Each state has its own legislation. But most of them follow a very similar line. So look it up. Look your states up. In, in Australia, it's slightly different. New Zealand, slightly different. But all of them have a very similar feel to them. In Europe, the different countries of Europe, slightly different. But all of them have a fairly similar kernel of the contract 
Here in the UK, that contract says something along these lines, and I'm paraphrasing because I'm not leaving you links or anything to this document and that document. I truly believe the old saying that a good teacher tells you how to look. A bad teacher tells you what to see. So hopefully I'm being a good teacher and I'm telling you, look it up yourself understand what those clauses are what it's saying to you find out for yourself because information you find out for yourself one you very rarely forget it and two it's more valuable to you because you found the information out i'm just telling you how to look for it because hopefully i'm a good teacher i'm telling you how to see not what to see a bad teacher and we have enough bad teachers in our public uh, in, in, in our public schools nowadays who are constantly telling you what to see what conclusions to come to not how to get to a conclusion on your own which is what logical thinking is all about it's telling you what you should see what conclusions you should come to that's bad teaching so hopefully I'm being a good teacher here and I'm telling you look it up for yourself but as a generalization because this is covering several countries and many different states so i can't go into specifics because i don't know exactly where you live but it's something like this the contracts between three people between the future wife the future husband which they will be once that contract signed so that's how it's worded wife and husband and the state that's government what the hell is government or the state doing getting involved in your marriage? Well, that's a really good question. And one I'm going to answer to a certain degree. Like I say, look it up for yourself because each is slightly different. So why is the government? Because when these laws were first put into place, it was to protect the woman. This is why women want to get married because now they're protected it'll say something along the lines of to provide the man or the husband is to provide for the wife there's no provision in there that says the wife is to provide for the husband or even offering conjugal rights nothing of that it's not like you're getting married so that you'll get a ready supply of bedroom fun no, there's nothing about that in there, but specifically it does set, set out to say that the man must provide for the woman. That's what the state wants from you. So if you split up, you're still expected to provide for her. Why do you think the divorce courts are so uneven against men and women? because it's already there in the contract. They're not making decisions about your specific circumstances, about your specific marriage, that she was a complete harlot and was sleeping with everybody from your best man to all the groomsmen to every sailor that got off the ship. It doesn't matter. You signed a contract and in that contract you agreed to provide for her. Now, if you have progeny on, on this journey together you have children together oh that's a whole different part of the contract about how you are to supply for them and the state got involved in this because they didn't want to be carrying the can of looking after somebody else's woman your woman the one you chose the one you got down on your knee offered a ring to and said please let me be your slave that's why I call the marriage certificate a slave certificate. Anyway, has this been useful information for you? Like I said, I hope I'm being a good teacher. Look this stuff up for yourself. Please do. I don't want to be one who's telling you what to see. I'm telling you how to see. And how to see is use your noggin, use your dome, and look up the information for yourself and that way you will know what I'm telling you is true. Don't take my word for it, please. I beg you, don't take my word for it. Find this out for yourself and you will also understand a second truth here and that is that women already know this. They share this information with themselves. 
they share it generationally from the older generation say you want to get yourself married get a man down the aisle and this is why I say absolutely not it's a great institution I'm just not crazy enough to be institutionalized so when I say you shouldn't get married that is exactly what I'm saying I'm not one of these men these MGTOWs the red pill mansplainers who just mansplainers manosphere do apologize manosphere guys who will tell you don't even get into a relationship that's down to you you, you know I mean <laughs> MGTOW's all about walking your own path, marching to the beat of your own drum. You make those decisions for yourself and don't let anybody else tell you you're wrong. I made my decision. I made my decision many, many years ago. I knew what was right for me and what was the smart and clever thing to do. And that's what I did. I'm telling you this information because I don't want you to be making a fool of yourself. And that's what you be doing. You literally have to be certifiably crazy to walk down the aisle and marry a woman in today's society. Until the laws get changed, until government takes itself out of our relationships, nothing's going to change. So much has changed with society. Women are now in the workforce, are earning good wages. Women are getting higher educations, earning better wages, better education. This wasn't true when those laws were written. But has the law changed? Has the courts moved on? Absolutely not. You're still expected to provide. It's like the courts are saying, like women are saying, we want you to, roll, to, to work in a traditional way, but the women can do anything they like. Well, we know that's a bad deal. We're no longer going to play along. This is why so many men are avoiding marriage smartly, thinking for themselves, figuring it out that this is a bad deal and I'm not going to get engaged with it. I'm not actually going to get engaged. And also why men are quite in big numbers walking away from relationships full stop and this is why women are crying to their friends about how they can't find a decent man how they are going to end up left on the shelf and that well you brought it on yourself men are waking up to the fact it's a bad deal for them not only a bad deal but harmful to them so anyway i hope you've got something from this video if you have please let me know even if it's just to say thank you or I agree I want to know if you disagree with me then argue the point not the person what I'm saying do you agree or disagree with it also come on give the video a like the video needs likes it's like um, it's like women want attention the video needs likes anyway if you've got something from this hit the subscribe button don't forget to hit the bell icon because for some reason I only know to YouTube, those two only work together and you won't miss out on future content. And I have got so much future content for you guys, some really great subjects and I don't want you to miss out on that. So come and join the brotherhood, come and be a brother. We're a welcoming community of like-minded men and you are more than welcome. Anyway, my name's Andy R. I'm going for a cup of tea. And as one of my subscribers said, which did make me chuckle, he said, after a video, he said, you've earned a cup of tea and a subscriber. Thanks, brother. Anyway, my name's Andy R. This is the Brotherhood of Men, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Remember, take care of yourself, because if you don't, who's going to? Bye now.